Hello everyone, welcome back. Survival, permadeath, no man's sky. We uh, have a few things in store for you today. We're getting real close to having all the bases built that we need for the trade goods that I've been talking about since the very beginning. And I'm getting down to just having a few more bases to build. And I realized I need to be able to do something in the anomaly that I haven't unlocked yet. And uh, it involves some story, so we're going to cover it here on camera. <coughs> so we have <coughs> the uh, primary missions here that we've been ignoring mostly. <laughs> because we wanted to build up. And now it's time to advance it another step or so. And I'll tell you why we care about it in a few minutes. Not on polar drift between worlds and worlds. There are many. Have you seen them, Traveler Friend? Nada wishes they could. Nada regrets much. What do you want me to do? Traveler Entity is free to make their own path. Find Artemis Entity. Explore with others. Travel to great sites. Proceed as you will, Traveler Entity. We will aid you. Others will aid you also, even if you seek the Crimson Liar. Uh, what's the Crimson Liar? Crimson Liar. Atlas. False Entity. Korvax worship, but Nada knows better. Nada knows where it dwells. Nada chooses to disregard it. But if Traveler Entity wishes to seek it, Nada will help. Nada wishes you to be safe. Well, we have been ignoring it for a long time, but I think it's time to ask her about how we can find Artemis. Of course, Nada has a small gift for you. Perhaps it will help. Perhaps not. Nada and Polo Friend will continue to search. Speak to us whenever you desire. I think we're supposed to talk to Polo next but we might already be good. We were so lonely, Nada and I, before we found each other, before we found you, friend, all of you, so many friends to share this time with. You feel the same, I hope? All right. That, I think, will unlock for us the Nexus, which is a mission hub. We haven't covered missions yet in this series, and why not just go to the best ones first? <laughs> the um, reason that I wanted to unlock the Nexus is, you know, we just uh, got those freighters unlocked, or uh, I should say we just purchased a freighter, saved a freighter from pirates, kind of got it for free actually. Um, and one of the things we need to be able to upgrade that so we can build part of our trade manufacturing or trade good manufacturing uh, operation we're going to need to uh, get some tech research some things to unlock new buildings or uh, facilities for our freighter one of the places that we can get those things is from nexus missions now, we don't have any of those Nexus missions available right now, but sometimes we will see a salvaged freighter uh, module, I think is what it's called, um, <clears throat> as a reward for one of the missions here. Since we're already here, there's something else that's worth paying attention to here. I mean. All missions will give you some little rewards. I mean, a million units, that's not bad, but the uh, thing that you can get in the Nexus you can't get anywhere else is this Quicksilver stuff. Once a day you can get a Quicksilver mission. If you don't do it, then they stack up to three days. And you can see these three things over here. They are the same icon as that special mission up at the top. So, we can do 
one of these real quick. This rate of planetary depot actually goes pretty fast. So I'm just going to show you what a mission is like real quick. Usually the ones in the Nexus are a little more difficult than the ones that you can get on space stations or from uh, pirate bounty captains or whatever they're called, bounty officers that you find in pirate space stations. These Nexus missions are designed to be multiplayer. Now, I find that you can single player most of them, but some of them are a little harder, some of them take a little longer than they would if you had help. But this one, raiding the Planetary Depot, shouldn't be too bad. Mostly because there's something they don't know. Or maybe they didn't intend. There's an easy... Okay, we have to answer our message first. Let's see what this is. Uh, no, no. Where is there anyone out there? It's outside. It's Something's wrong with... Oh, we, got, we got the Artemis quest. I wasn't going to do this right now. <laughs> <clears throat> So, uh, I will tell them who is out here, I guess. I tell the stranger that I can hear them. There is a moment's pause. The only sound I hear is the background hiss of cosmic radiation. You, you found me. There's so little light. I, I thought I'd never hear another soul again. I really did. How did you find my voice? Well, I found a crashed ship. I tell the stranger about the abandoned starship wreck and how I found their communicator ID and the distress beacon. I begin to mention the anomalous space station, but they cut me off. It's outside, but I think I'm safe. There are 16 of them. They look just like... Uh, what about the 16? Fear and confusion dance within the eyes of the stranger. After a few moments of silence, they turn to me imploring. You don't know who you are, do you? You. It lied to me. It lied to all of the sound cuts off out, but their face lingers on silent before it too fades into nothingness. This must be Artemis, and they are clearly in need of help. I need to find a way to boost their signal. We'll do that later. We're on a mission. It's been so long since we did the Artemis mission. I don't know if you guys even remember it. It's so long ago now. <laughs> But we'll get back to it. All right, let's see here. Somewhere right around here, there is Target is in range. Oh, well, we landed right on the spot. Isn't that great? All right. We have an upgraded gun this time. Since we're having some unforeseen delays, I'm going to do the little cheesy way of getting this mission going quicker. The terminal is covered in a thick purple substance. Shimmering bubbles expanding just below the surface. The alarm rings in my ears. Touch the display. Gingerly, I touch the terminal, but it does not respond. Perhaps if the network mistook me for a sentinel, I could get further. Well, let's put some pugnam on our hands and see what happens. The terminal comes to life. Coordinates flash rapidly across the display in a strange purple script. The down I download the address to my exosuit navigation systems. <laughs> it's a sentinel party in here. All right. <clears throat> now we can move on to the next step. Where is our ship? How far is that? little far to walk. We're going to take our ship.
almost there. That was quick. There's the Target Depot, and here's the cheap trick. You can blow up depots with your Starship blasters, which is way faster than doing it with your guns. friends. I made friends. You see that? I got a five sentinel rating. Yeah. We are going to have a lot of friends if we don't get out of here. For what it's worth, we'll do a video just on that sentinel alert status and what happens if you drive it up and the rewards you can get for well I won't say anymore whoa hello look at that thing <laughs> some kind of flying looks kind of like a What it looks like is something we haven't talked about yet. It looks like a living ship. I wasn't going to talk about it. But, anyway. Alright, so we completed the mission. How far do we have to run? Uh, not too far. Normally I'd call the ship to me, but I don't think the fuel tanks are full, and after the recent update, you can't call your ship to you unless the tanks are full. And it completely unloads the tank, which is less fun. But, alright, let's go turn this in. Get out of the atmosphere here, and oh, not quite far enough. <clears throat> so, now that we've completed our mission, <coughs> we head back to the anomaly, interact with the Nexus, and turn it in. So it took a little little while, a few minutes, but not too bad. And I think it said we're going to get 500 uh, Quicksilver. Let's see. 400, which is pretty good. And I'll show you what you can use Quicksilver for. This uh, guy here who looks, I don't know, to me, he looks like he's got a little chef hat on. <laughs> but um, you can take that Quicksilver and you can trade it in for different little cosmetic things mostly. There's base decoration parts, there's emotes, there's appearance upgrades, that's what I've mostly focused on getting. That's where I unlocked the armor set that we're using currently. And uh, yeah, so that's about it. But I won't spend a whole lot of time scrolling through that, but the uh, cool armor we're wearing was unlocked there at the Nexus. So, let's see, how are we doing for time? We've got a little bit more time. But not a lot more. Maybe i can show you a little bit of what I've been up to.
I've been building a lot of bases, like I said. And it shouldn't take too long to work between the new ones to show you what they look like. I don't have a lot of base decorations unlocked, but I've been experimenting with the stuff that I do have and come up with some interesting looking bases, I think. We'll show those off real quick. And then we'll call it good for today. We'll be back again soon with more freighter stuff. But this first one here is built next to a sentinel nest boundary node place where we can shut down all the sentinels on a planet when we do that it just automatically destroys any sentinels that happen to be nearby I think I've shown this before but it's pretty nice to get this free stuff for almost no effort. Alright, so this is the base here. Can't see it very well unfortunately right now. The sun has put it in the shade of the boundary node, but I colored the base the same color as the boundary node. Landing pad and all that. So it kind of looks like it's uh, part of the base, uh, part of the node. Yeah, bad time of day. Well, there's a way to fix that. We just have to move the sun. Let's move the sun over there. And now we can see better. So you see the color isn't quite the same, but I think it looks pretty nice. We've got the little windows. We've got the the boundary node interface terminal conveniently inside the center base structure. We've got a little bit of base storage there. I like these windows. You can look out and see this kind of cool. It's almost a crater looking thing that we're inside of. But the real reason we're here is to get silver. You need lots of silver to build freighter bases instead of using ferrite dust like we use in most of the bases that I've been building or pure ferrite. They're, uh, the uh, freighter bases require instead silver. So. <laughs> The next base is on a toxic world, and it's sitting next to a pretty cool ancient structure that we'll talk more about in a later video. But it's also storming here. <laughs> um, it's also a place that has cobalt, which is what I use to make these, well, not the star shield batteries, but the uh, ion batteries that I use to fuel the hazard protection. So this base is kind of camouflaged, colored it green so it just blends in with everything else around here. The design is pretty similar to the one we were just at but I have a little bit different windows you can see we've got these wide bay windows so it makes it a little easier to see out there's a little bit more to see when there's not a crazy storm going on but you can still see a fair amount these nice wide windows help you do that moving on to the next one that uh, really cool toxic world that I 
slipped in at the end of a video here real recently. I think it was the last one, but it might have been the one before that. Usually toxic worlds are green, but this one is kind of a yellow and purple color. It depends on the time of day. During the day it looks kind of orange, but at night it looks pretty purple. And so I colored this base purple to match it. And maybe we'll just uh, use that little screenshot trick to show you that. Let's move the sun down below the horizon. So now the ground looks a little more purple, you can see. The sunlight kind of washed it out, but you can see these kind of thistle-looking things that uh, put those cool streamers out in the air. They glow, and so do these smaller ones that don't do that. And you got yellow and purple, and I just think the purple looks pretty cool. One with a brick pattern on it. Normally brick pattern looks really dumb, but here it looks pretty cool. <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> this is the base where we're picking up ammonia. That uh, it's not very exciting, but we need it to make our stuff. So, next one. This next one, we laid it out with a square prefab and I experimented with the rust paint job. So the structure is pretty similar to what we've seen before. Just a storage silo and a couple of uh, storage containers, but uh, this is dioxide. On the inside it looks okay, although these uh, base parts that I was able to color, they, uh, they look like the outside here. You can see the paint looks all worn. It's supposed to be rusty, I guess. Some of the colors look more rusty than others, but it looks kind of cool. And we put these glass walkways in, that's pretty nice. Makes it so you can see out when you're going to collect stuff. I like that. Gives you a nice view. I don't particularly like the rust paint job, but I think in this snowy place it looks kind of cool. Like maybe frost blasted instead of painted. Let's see, what else do we have? The ones we have left are some of my favorite ones. I'll save my two most favorite ones for last. We're running a little long. Hopefully that's uh, worth it to see these interesting bases that I've spent entirely too much time building. <laughs> Got to use those bay windows again. I really like this planet. It looks real nice. It's frozen, but when it's not storming, and it doesn't storm here often, it's real clear. Looks real nice. We've got kind of a blue steel look going on here. We can see the sky. got these cool mountains in the distance. There's just a lot to see here. And there's craters. You can see those there. Over there and over there. And there's white accents in this paint job here. And it just blends in. It's a winter wonderland. But in an interesting way, I think the white lines make it pop. So, <clears throat> I've got a full storage facility here, all 10 storage containers. And I decided that in most bases, I like this teal color for the 
the teleport terminus. Matches the color of the portal itself, portal energy. Uh, which one of these two is the most interesting one to show next? I don't know. Go with this one next. <clears throat> This one is on a rocky, arid world, and I decided to put the storage beneath the base. It's kind of got this cool uh, internal door and this kind of gray and bit of a purple from the outside lighting going on in here. Looks really interesting, I think, especially when you're looking down the hall. That's just a cool shot, especially at night. So this one I went with gray with red accents and I built this overlook so you can see the really cool lake. It's a pretty barren world, but the lake looks pretty cool. This base might be my favorite one just because it's got a really cool view and, and it did something kind of creative with the way I was slapping the storage in there. Didn't really just slap it in there. <clears throat> Voice isn't cooperating with me today. <clears throat> have to forgive me. Almost done. <clears throat> anyway, this is a really cool location, I think. I was trying to find a location on this planet that had resources that I needed, but also was near one of these lakes. So it just looks pretty cool. And then built the uh, landing pad on part of, on top of part of the base, which was mostly an efficient use of space, but I think it's kind of interesting too. So now onto the last one. This one toss up between the Lake Overlook base that we were just in, and, and this one, which one's my favorite. This one's on a prettier world, although I love that lake. <laughs> this one is in a steep series of mountain ridges, ranges, whatever. Quite a view here. Steep mountains everywhere makes it really hard to get around. <laughs> and uh, so I put the, the glass frontage on this. No lights in the front, just, just glass and the storage silos that have the industrial goods that we need. But I think that looks pretty cool. I could expand on that, this base. It's kind of interesting if I moved this launch pad and dug out the cliff side a little bit farther. We could make this into a pretty cool house, I think, eventually. This one was gray and black coloring. The idea was kind of to have it blend in with the dirt a little bit. And when it's nighttime, it really does blend in. We'll uh, go ahead and move that sun. Oh, that's a nice effect. I think we just found the screenshot for this video. Let's see if we can't get a little bit more of the base in it. There we go. Nice. And while we were doing that, the sun actually did set. That's interesting. So yeah, it, uh, it blends in fairly well. Kind of feels like it's part of the mountain. But um, use that inner door again. That hides the base terminus from the windows on the front. Which uh, I did mostly to for a little variety but uh, also to keep that front part not lit. That's also why I use that uh, interior door as it helps choke off the lights from the inside. But 
Yeah. I like this cool little overhanging thing over the landing pad. Not very practical, but it looks cool. Anyway, that's it for today, I think. The other bases. Uh, there's a couple. Like this one I've changed. It looks a little different. But I think that's the place to stop. I'll show you that one a little bit later. Because I think at this point we are... Oh yes, yeah, so far over time. But I hope you enjoyed all of this. Um, we'll see you again real soon. Until then, have a great one. Bye now.